So Ryan and I are working on a fun project this week and that is fixing our solar panels. Hopefully, if you remember from one of my previous videos, we were able to get a screaming deal on these 14 kilowatts worth of solar panels for just 300 bucks. And we got such a great deal because they were from the ding and dent section from a Minnesota solar farm. And so there is some cosmetic damage there. Thankfully, the electronics are still great, but with those cracks, water can eventually get in and it can shorten the lifespan of the panel. So our goal this week is to apply a product that's really gonna help seal in those cracks and expend their lifespan. So let's go ahead and dive in and I hope it works. But the first thing we wanna do before we spend any time and resources repairing this panel is we wanna make sure that it works properly. So Ryan has this little tool, so we're gonna check the voltage yep. and make sure it works. It's just a normal voltmeter and we're gonna measure the open current voltage so each one of these solar panels has a little sticker on it that says how many watts it's rated for and it also gives the open current voltage so there is enough light in here we got some light coming in the window window and actually the lights in the shop will set it off too so we'll be able to hook up and make sure it's actually reading so there's wires underneath that are zip tied up but you can kind of see them here and then there's one on the other side so i'll just stick my probes into here and uh get a reading I'm thinking this one might be positive, but I don't really know. We'll find out. We will find out. Forty-one volts. Is that what we're looking for? Uh, let's see what the sticker says. That's a lot, though. Max power voltage is forty-one point six. Open current is forty-nine. Obviously, we don't have direct sunlight here, so I think the fact that we're getting forty-one, forty-two is pretty good. Yeah, just from this. Tiny little window over here. Yeah, and just the lights in here. And yeah. I don't know any better. I mean, maybe that is crappy, but it's not reading zero. <laughs> yeah, it's worth saving. Yeah, it's worth trying. Yeah. Um, I guess we will know more when we check other identical ones to it, because yeah. in theory they're not all bad. But, you know, looking at this, it is just in the glass, and all the glass does is keep mm -hmm. rainwater from corroding the photovoltaic part of this. So, you know, I don't see any corrosion in here. You'd see, like, white or green on the... Um, connections and everything, and I'm not seeing that. So I think it is still good. And the cats already made me a promise that they are not going to jump on the solar panels when I'm working on them. We'll see if they hold their end of the bargain. So our next step is we really want to make sure we're cleaning the solar panel super well before we seal it. So I'm going to be using a glass cleaner and then after that a 91% isopropyl alcohol and then once it's fully clean we really want to make sure that all of the moisture is out of it so i'm going to be using a heat gun to drive any last little bit out of there good now I think and even the little cracks are harder to see we are sealing the panels with this product called Q cell 215 this is an optical potting agent so it's really designed for people that want to build their own solar panels you can get the photovoltaic cells do all your wiring and then you pour this over the top of it and it creates the protective layer that keeps the oxygen out and the water out so it doesn't corrode. It's optical though, it's clear, and what we're gonna use it for is to seal in these cracks because all we're trying to do is keep moisture out of the electrical traces and everything in the panel that would corrode over time and cause them to fail. So what we're gonna do is mix this at 10 to one. You do 10 parts, I think they call this part A. Oh yeah, and then 10 part, part B. Perfect, and that's by weight. By weight, so we have okay. a scale set up here. So I don't know how much we really need yet. This is, it's a pint, right? Yeah, 
It's like 35 bucks for one of these. We yeah. bought a gallon because we got a whole bunch of them to do. Anyway, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> and it's tricky because it sets in four hours, right? It gels in four hours, it cures in like 24. Yeah, so you can't like reuse it once you mix it up. Yeah, it's, it's going once you start it. So we don't really know how much we need and we don't want to waste a bunch, but seeing as it does have a four hour pot life, the thought is we can just mix a little bit more on top of it for today. I think we're gonna try and do four panels today. So we'll just start off with a little bit, try and not waste it, but we may end up wasting it. And I couldn't find any cleanup information on it. It's a silicone rubber based product and I couldn't find anything to clean up. So pretty sure our paintbrush is one and done with this. Yeah. And we only have one paintbrush, so. <laughs> We're we'll just see what use happens. It today. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen this product used in this way before. This is what it, yeah, this is a uh, common repair. Or this is really the only product. Well, I take that back. So there are the UV activated, what do they call them? Anyway, same stuff you clean your car or seal your car windshield with when it cracks. And I did buy some of that. But realistically, you aren't going to do a whole panel, right? You're going to do one little crack or something like that. And we're yeah. just going to go ahead. I mean, this panel here is pretty much cracked along the whole thing. We're just yeah. going to coat the whole panel. On some of the panels that aren't so bad, we're going to try and just coat the areas that are cracked. It's like spot treat it. What is this stuff? It's a magic trick to get it open. Yes, it's not. It looks like electrical tape, but it is not electrical tape. Here's a close-up look at this product. I'll make sure to link it in the description if you want to give it a go. So what is that, 44 grams, basically? Yeah, so it's going to be 4.4. I'm glad we're using my more precise scale. Yeah, me too. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey. All right, so stir it up and paint it on. OK. Does it change in how it looks? It's optically clear. OK. Oh, look who's coming back to inspect. Don't you dare, little honey. Oh, good. We've got another one. Just checking it out. Oh, boy. Okay, here's the moment of truth. A bit thicker than I was expecting. Right, because it's cold. So the key is you want to keep an eye on it as you're brushing it on to make sure that it's going on thick enough. I don't know if you can see the reflection very well through the camera, but you can kind of see there's lines there and then it gets pretty glossy there. So that is a good even thickness. You want it to basically look like smooth glass again. So just slowly working my way through it and we found that warmer temps makes it go on a lot better. It's 60 degrees here in the shop and so if we warmed up the solution to 70, it's going on a whole lot better. Well, I just finished up the little batch that we mixed up and I didn't get very far. All that I got finished is this little chunk here. So about a quarter of the solar panel. So I'm gonna have to mix up more. And unfortunately, I'm afraid that we're probably gonna need to order some more product. It's just not spreading quite as well. It's kind of like glue if you wanna think about it in that consistency we have, and we have many more solar panels to go but all in all i think we're still going to be way ahead Well, I finished my coat here on this solar panel. I think it turned out pretty nice. And to give you an idea of how much I used, so this is a four by eight panel and I used about a little bit less than half of that one bottle set. So if you're doing an entire panel, that's kind of what I would shoot for. But if you just have a corner like we do for most of our panels, it should spread a whole lot further than that. So that'll be great. So now what Ryan is doing is using a heat gun because we really want this mixture to seep into those cracks to fully waterproof them. Hi. What's going on? You want to help? <laughs> 
we're on to panel number two. This one is dirty, so I've got some cleanup to do before I can even see where I need to apply the product. Now that everything's clean, we can have a better look at what's actually happening with this panel. So it looks like we had some sort of an impact there that kind of spread out some shock waves. There's a little bit of cracking here. There's some in the corner, a little bit on the side as well, but this end is largely unaffected. So I'm hopeful that I'm not gonna have to coat the whole panel. Right, we are looking good. So the only part that I didn't do was this little section here. And this one has a lot more deeper cracks than the other panels. So I made sure to take my time, make sure it's a nice, not super thick, but a decent coat to fill those cracks. So I'm gonna let these cure and harden overnight and we'll take a peek in the morning. So it's been about 24 hours and I have two updates for you guys. One is, been really surprised by how slow this product is to cure. These are the ones I did yesterday and they're still pretty tacky to the touch. So I think part of it is it's kind of cool here in the shop. It was about 50 last night. It warms up to about 60 during the day. So if you are treating your panels in your home or some other warmer location, they'll probably cure a little bit faster. So we're having to factor in a little bit more time than we were planning on. And so with that, Ryan built a nice little rack this morning to store the panels while they're drying so that I can get working on our other panels. We still have a bunch more to go. And if we had to wait with days in between having these set up, it would just take forever, not to mention clog up the space. So I'm gonna get working on these couple ones, couple new ones, let these fully cure. It'll probably be another couple days. So I'll check back in when it's fully done and give you a final report. So it's been about 48 hours and I wanted to give you some final takeaways before I wrap up this video. So I've been working on a few more panels since we last chatted. The two on the very bottom of our rack system are the ones that we did together in the beginning. They're almost dry. They're just slightly tacky to the touch. So I think by tomorrow, so 72 hours in, they should be fully cured. Hopefully that rack system is turning out to be awesome. So highly recommend doing one of those if you're doing a lot of panels especially with how long these have taken to dry that part was a little unexpected and it's really warm in here today it's about 71 degrees our solar wall is just whipping and doing awesome today so that's helping too i feel like the product is going on a little bit smoother and then a foam brush has turned out to be the best tool to use i started out with a bristle brush it worked okay but the foam brush it seems like it spreads on a lot easier smoother there's less brush marks so and these are cheap especially since we don't know that there's any cleanup information so we can just throw these away afterwards so next steps is i'm just gonna get my audiobooks going and keep cranking on these i have about 20 more panels to do outside so it's taking a bit more time and the dry time is obviously a factor too but i think overall it's gonna be worth it. Now, of course, we won't know for sure until these are installed and out in the elements and see how they do with repelling water and all of that. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe so you can get a follow-up video on how it's going and how we're gonna install the solar panels. So lots of fun things happening. Thanks so much for being here and I'll catch you next time.